very happily uh, in Cyprus in Copenhagen. And uh, we're here to uh, talk to us about this campaign. Yes. So thank you so much. <laughs> Good evening. I appreciate everybody coming out on a night like this. I know you could be at home with your families, and I appreciate you coming out and uh, spending a little time with me, and I'm happy to uh, chat with you a little bit. I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about my background, who I am, a little bit about what's going on in Washington, D.C., and why I'm running for Congress, and uh, I appreciate, again, the, the chance to be with you today. Uh, again, my name is Steve Stivers. Uh, I grew up in a little town in southern Ohio, a town a lot like Richwood, a little town called Ripley, Ohio, right on the Ohio River. Uh, I had about 100 people in my graduate or in my high school, in my graduating class. Um, about 2,500 people in the town, a great little town, river town. Uh, there in Ripley, I was uh, in 4-H, showed horses, I was a Boy Scout, worked hard, became an Eagle Scout, was in the marching band, uh, played baseball, played a little basketball. Uh, the great thing about a little town is you get to do about anything you want to do, and uh, so I got a chance to experience a lot of things. Then in 1983, I had a chance to uh, go to the Ohio State University, so I moved to Columbus to go to Ohio State, and uh, I've been in Columbus ever since. Uh, Central Ohio is really a great uh, community, and uh, including uh, Madison and Union counties, and I've really enjoyed uh, spending my life there and growing my family up in, uh, in this area. It's got great value. Um, I, uh, while I was in college at Ohio State, I made a couple decisions that impacted the rest of my life. Uh, number one, I joined the National Guard. I enlisted in 1985. I've been in the National Guard ever since. Um, was in communications, then went to officer candidate school. Was lucky enough in uh, 2000 and uh, then got a chance to uh, command company and command a battalion. Was lucky enough to get to command a battalion in uh, 2004. Uh, then in 2003, of course, um, we uh, ended up in uh, the Operation Iraqi Freedom. And uh, so in 2004, I was, uh, my unit was called up. And in 2004 and 2005, I got a chance to lead about 400 uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and uh, civilians, uh, contractors, as a battalion commander in a combat zone. Uh, we weren't kicking indoors, we were delivering mail. Just, you know, everything you do is important, and we got a chance to make sure that people got the packages they needed, whether it was a letter from their wife or grandma's cookies. Uh, one of the things I'm proudest of is that we actually had a chance to uh, speed up the time it took to get people their mail. Uh, when I got there, it was taking about 11 days to get a package from Columbus, <laughs> Ohio to Baghdad. When we left, it was taking about six days to get a package from Columbus, Ohio to Baghdad. In two of those days, it took to get from Columbus to Newark, New Jersey, where we didn't notice until it got to Newark. So I was really proud. We kept the mail moving, got it to people. Uh, I'm really proud of the folks that worked for me over there, and I'm proud that we brought them all back. Um, all that kind of came out of my um, enlisting in the Guard back at Ohio State. The other decision I made while I was at the Ohio State University was to become a page at the Ohio State House. And I got a chance, I worked for a man named Cooper Snyder, got a chance to see how government really can help people and how constituent affairs matter and how legislation, um, you can really affect people's lives with legislation. So um, I fell in love with really making a difference for people in government. And uh, that uh, uh, led me to a, a little bit of a career in public service later on. After college, uh, I worked for the Ohio Company and then Bank One. And then uh, in 2003, I had a chance to become a, an Ohio Senator. And so I served in the Ohio Senate from 2003 until 2008. Um, in the Ohio Senate, I worked on tort reform to level the scales of justice. Uh, we carefully crafted a tort reform bill that I think protects anybody who could be a victim, but also looks out for the unintended economic impact of lawsuit abuse. Uh, we also crafted a fiscally conservative state budget um, that gave people the biggest property tax cut in Ohio history. Uh, and I worked on bills, including things like Medicaid buy-in, that help people with disabilities get a chance to keep their Medicaid, but as they make more money, they actually pay more money for it. So it's actually helped, it could help about 17,000 people go back to work 
people that have disabilities. Uh, I'm proud of my legislative record in 2008. Uh, I had to choose whether I wanted to run for uh, re-election to the state senate in a district that is a uh, pretty solidly Republican district or run for Congress uh, in the 15th district uh, in a district that's very evenly divided. And I chose to run for Congress because I really felt like this country was at a crossroads. It was at a crossroads on spending. It was at a crossroads on government growth. And uh, I felt like I needed to uh, offer myself up as a uh, candidate for Congress. Uh, that was a close race. Uh, I lost. And uh, then, uh, you know, in Washington over the last couple of years, uh, things have gotten worse. They've spent more money. In the first 500 days of this Congress, they spent $7 million a minute. Uh, 41 cents of every dollar is also borrowed money. Uh, so that means every hour they're spending $420 million and borrowing $170 million, $172 million. That's, uh, that's really scary. It's scary for my daughter, who's a year old, who, who when she was born owed $35,000 as her share of the national debt. Now she owes $43,000 as her share of the national debt. Uh, we've got to get that under control. Uh, that's why I decided to run for Congress again. And uh, we're working hard. We've knocked on about 75,000 doors. And uh, we'll continue to work hard. I want to go to Congress to represent you and uh, make sure that we uh, focus on cutting government spending and focus on jobs. Uh, the other thing that's going on in Washington are things like uh, the health care bill. The health care bill spends too much money, and unfortunately, it's having a negative impact on jobs. I talked to a, a businessman in the, in the Hilliard area about a week ago. He has 46,000, I'm sorry, he has 46 people small business guy, 46 people working for him, and uh, he is scared to death to hire anybody because he doesn't want to exceed 50 employees because that's where the mandates kick in. Uh, did anybody see today what happened? McDonald's and a few other employers actually got um, exempted from the mandates in the health care bill. The concern I've got is a lot of small businesses out there don't have the clout to get exempted, but the impact is the same whether you're a big business or a small business. And so it's going to lead to people potentially losing their insurance. And um, the other thing I've heard from a lot of people is it's increasing their costs. And when they get their renewals this year, and I don't know if any of you have gotten your renewal, they're seeing one of the reasons that their renewals are going up, and you're seeing rates go up somewhere between 8 and 40%, depending on who you are. Uh, one of the reasons is because of this, this health care bill. We have got to fix the health care bill. Uh, I want to fix the health care bill by focusing on costs. I want to pass real court reform. I want to encourage healthy behaviors. 40% of our healthcare costs are directly related to the behaviors that people choose. And uh, I believe that we need to focus on changing that. Um, this uh, healthcare bill also walks away from uh, health savings accounts. And I think health savings accounts are one of the few things that have people asking how much does it cost? And I think that's an important question to have people asking. So I'm, I'm convinced we've got to expand that and not cut back on that. Um, I also think we uh, have got to focus on getting rid of some of the unrelated provisions in the health care bill. Who here has heard of the 1099 provision in the health care bill? A bunch of you have. Um, it basically says if you do more than $600 of business with um, someone, then you have to do a 1099 um, saying that you're doing uh, that much business with them. And uh, that's gonna be really onerous on a lot of small businesses. Uh, it also is gonna generate, the government said, about $17 billion in revenue. And the only reason it's gonna generate revenue is because somebody's gonna make a mistake and they're gonna have to pay a fine. So uh, that's not uh, my idea of being friendly to business, especially small business. There was already an attempt to get rid of that provision, uh, and I hope that we can get rid of that provision in the health care bill. I think it's very onerous. And it doesn't, the other thing about that provision is it doesn't help one more person in this country get health care. So, uh, you know, if we're going to focus on um, health care, we need to focus on cost first, because when I've knocked on doors, the first thing people have told me is to the extent there's a problem in health care, cost is the biggest problem. Access is probably another concern that we've got to work on, but one out of every three people that is uninsured 
qualifies for a government program today, and we need to make it easier for them to sign up at their doctor, at their pharmacy, at their hospital, wherever they're getting care. And so I think that's a way to really focus on access. Um, and we need to focus on quality. Uh, those are really the dimensions of healthcare we need to pay attention to. Uh, I'm also concerned about the cap and trade bill that would uh, kill 100,000 Ohio jobs. Um, we cannot afford to kill 100,000 jobs in this economy. Um, so we need to move away from those things and uh, focus on smaller government, more efficient government that will deliver the services that people want. So uh, that's why I'm running for Congress. Uh, there's 25 days left. Uh, I'm out everywhere I can be, reaching out to voters, talking to voters. Uh, I've met a lot of you before. I appreciate you all being here tonight. And uh, I uh, just appreciate your time and I'll work hard every day, both during the campaign and if I'm lucky enough to be elected to make you proud. Uh, I'm sorry other candidates couldn't make it. I appreciate just the opportunity to be with you.